Hello everyone and welcome to this week's After Effects scripting tutorial. Today we're going to be learning all about text layers, what is possible, what's not possible, and how to adjust the properties of any given text layer. Now the properties you can change within a text layer are limited by what version of After Effects you're using and we'll also be going over those as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started and take a look at what we're going to be creating. I have here a composition with some sample text and the goal today is just to manipulate some text values. Uh, over here, we're going to reset all of the character styles and set them up manually, set it to Times New Roman, set a custom color, font size, and everything. So if we go ahead and run this, you can see it, it goes ahead and changes quite a bit here for us. Changes our text to different text name to change text. Changes the stroke, the fill, the font, the font size, all of the information we need. And one last cool thing we'll be taking a look at is something lesser known about After Effects, and that is now that you can check what kind of text it is. So whether you create a normal text, or if you click and drag and create a text box, we can now detect which is which. So I'm gonna go ahead and start up a new JavaScript file, and over in After Effects, I'm just gonna have a blank composition with some text. And this is going to be our sample text, which I'll just place at uh, layer position one. But you can access your layer however you wish. So the first thing we need to do is just go ahead and grab our composition. So we have comp one here. We want to grab app.projects.activeItem. So again, we're going to be assuming that the user has a composition selected before we run the script. Then we'll set up a variable for our text layer, which I'm just going to call layer. And I'll set this equal to comp.layer1. You can also set this to something like comp.selectedLayers, item 0. And this would be the first selected layer in your composition. And then lastly, I'm going to have a quick variable called text layer. And we're just going to be using this to check if it's a text layer. And if it is, we want layer to be a text layer. So in line with that, we're going to have our first statement here. It's going to be an if statement, and we're going to check if it's a text layer. Now the easy way to check if it's a text layer is to check if it has the text effect, or in this case, source text. So what I can do is grab my layer, and I'm going to check for the property source text. This is the property that contains all of the text inside of here. We can go in and adjust it. We're going to say, if this is not equal to null, which basically means does it exist? Is the source text, does it exist? Because if it doesn't, it will return null. But in this case, it looks like we have a source text, so it's not going to be null. So if that is the case, text layer is going to be equal to our layer. The reason I have a separate variable for here for text layer is if we wanted to run through multiple layers, and some of them weren't text layers, we could just say, okay, now we have a text layer, we need to manipulate this instead of every layer. Next up, we can go ahead and create a new text document object. Inside of the scripting guide on page 182 in the CS6 guide, there is the text document object, which is essentially what this entire tutorial is about, except for a few other features that aren't as well mentioned in this guide. So we are going to create a new text document and this text document contains values like uh, the font size, the colors, the stroke, uh, the fonts, the justification, the tracking, the leading. And we're going to be using this object to apply and change our text anytime we want. So again, page 182 of the CS6 scripting guide, you can check out all of the properties we can change. So I'm going to create a new text document and just call it well, text document because it's easy that way. And we'll set it equal to new text document. And it does take a string, and that's going to be our new text. Now, one thing to note is it's not really common practice to create text documents like this. Uh, although it's in the guide, I don't use it personally myself, and I don't see a lot of others using this method. Typically, we just want to hard code the values in. But if you're a very object-oriented programmer, this is probably the best method for you to go about. So just to do a test here, I'm going to grab uh, my text layer, and I want to change the text. So I'm going to grab our source text property and set the value to our text document. So now if I go ahead and run it, you can see we've now successfully changed our text with our object. Now if you wanted to say change the font, you wanted to say text document dot font equals times new roman, uh, PSMT I believe is the match name. Um, this is not going to work 
because the text document is not applied yet. It doesn't really have these font, color, and other properties attached until we set the value. So in order to change and set the values of our source text, we're going to create one more variable here called text prop. And this is just going to be our source text property. Um, and this is gonna save us space later down the road so we don't have to keep typing text layer dot property source text over and over again. And also in the guide, the example also always uses text prop and text document. So our text prop is just equal to the source text parameter here. And now we're going to set our text document equal to our text prop dot value. And the value of our source text, again, is going to contain all of our properties, like font size, color, and all that. All right, now that we've created our text document object and our text property variable, now we can go ahead and go through and change all of the values we want. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this here and go over it one by one here. The first thing is text document .reset char style. What this is going to do is if you click on your character panel and click on reset character, this is going to set everything back to the default values they were at. This way we can start with a fresh slate and customize the text completely. Then we also have reset paragraph style. So if you go into your paragraph tab here, you can click on reset paragraph and it will set it back to the default alignment. Then we have an adjustment for font size, which is directly the font size. So we can change this to whatever value we want. We can also change the fill color dot fill color, which is this color here and we can input a three-dimensional array from values zero to one representing RGB. And the same with the stroke. In this case, I set up a green stroke with zero, one, zero as the RGB values. And then I set the stroke width up to two. And then for the font, it's a little bit more tricky. You can't just say, okay, well, I wanna do Calibri font. Sometimes this will work, other times it will not. The reason for so is that like when we apply After Effects effects, we need to use the match name for the font. This is sort of the system name that the script is going to use to calculate it. So we need to make sure we have the font names, which again, in Times New Roman's case is Times New Roman PSMT. So just look up uh, fonts match names and you might be able to find a list somewhere. At one point there was a Photoshop script that you could click on a font and it would give you the match name, but I'm not sure if that is available anymore. All right, next up we have stroke overfill, apply stroke, and apply fill, which I actually messed up here. What this will do is change this to whatever you choose it to be. Stroke overfill, if it's true, is going to be stroke overfill. If stroke overfill is false, fill over stroke will be true. And then we can make sure we apply the stroke or apply the fill. If we don't, it'll likely be invisible like in this case here. We can also change the text directly inside of here by grabbing the dot text. So instead of saying new text up here, it's gonna say changed text. After that, we have justification, which is incredibly useful. This will allow us to go into the paragraph uh, window here and we can change it to be from left, center, or right. The way we do this is set dot justification equal to a very specific uh, piece of text. This doesn't have to be a string. It just needs to say paragraph justification, each of those words capitalized, and then dot your alignment underscore justify. So if I wanted to change this to left alignment, I would just replace center um, with left. And likewise, if I wanted to make this right justify, we just would need to do that. All right, next up we have tracking, which is how far between the characters it is. This is sort of like a scaling based on the size of the characters. Very useful feature that is now accessible through scripting. This may have some compatibility issues with earlier After Effects versions, but for sure in Creative Cloud it will be working. However, the leading, which is the space between our lines, say we have two lines of text here, and we wanted to change the leading, it's going to change the space between each end line. This feature is only available in After Effects CC 2017 and newer. I know, right? They have tracking but no leading in these earlier versions. Well, there are a couple of other ways to get around it, which I can go over in future tutorials. Uh, it requires some complex math, and I've done it for some actual scripts that are for sale, but other than that, I'm assuming everyone's using 2017 or 2019. So again, that just adjusts how much space between each line there is. All right, next up, I'm gonna set up three variables. One called point text, one called box text, 
and one called box text size. I'm going to define these all next to each other because they have no values yet. The first thing I'm going to do is grab my point text and I want to check if this is a text box or just a point text. This would be useful for again, say we don't have leading and there's multiple lines, it's a big text box. We need to go ahead and figure out how to calculate that. So our point text is going to be equal to text document dot point text. Pretty simple. And this is a read only property that returns either true or false if it's true or false. So if this was created as point text, it's going to return true, if not false. So then I'll grab my box text and set that equal to our text document dot box text. Now if box text is false, box text size is also going to be sort of non-existent. If it's not box text, how are we going to have a box text size? So we're going to say if box text is not null, so in this case it is a box text, then we're going to grab our box text size and set that equal to text document dot box text size. And as you can see, I named these pretty obviously so that there's no confusion. So now I'm going to go ahead and just alert some of these. So I can go and copy and paste my alerts here, my write lines, console logs, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I'm just basically saying, check, uh, ch tell us if this is point text, tell if this is box text, and if it's box text, tell us the size of it. All right, and just so we can undo everything super easily, I'm going to add a begin and end undo group here. Just call it text stuff and We'll undo that group. Now let's go ahead and run it. So as you can see, we're getting an error here. We forgot to check. We should actually just check if it's true, not null, my bad. So box text is equal to true. If it exists, do that. All right, so now if we go ahead and run our script, you can see we're gonna get everything changed here. And we have our text, which has changed font size, color, leading, everything. And we can now easily go back in and adjust the values. Let's say we wanted a blue outline instead. We can easily do that. Let's maybe change the text to a little bit black or dark. And maybe change the justification to left. And again, we can easily control Z or command Z and undo this. Run it again. And you can see we can quickly get the looks that we need. And you can take this to any level you want, have tons of presets, and just create a bunch of text documents or text objects to contain all of that data. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week's After Effects scripting tutorial. Of course, we'll have another quick tip tutorial this Thursday. But if you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. To be notified of when the next videos come out, be sure to hit the subscribe and bell button right next to it. And as always, if you have any requests or comments, put them in the comments down below. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.